So, we looked at how the deformation takes place in a single crystal and I left you with the thought how this will what will be the scenario when we are talking about polycrystals. So, what do we mean by polycrystal? So, let us say we have cylindrical bar like this So, these are different grains. Now, in single crystal it was much easier for us because cos phi and cos lambda term would uh, would be same for throughout the crystal, but here the cos phi and cos lambda term would be different for each of these. So, what it would mean is that all the planes uh, in fact, I should say all the grains must get activated or must get deformed simultaneously when you are applying a stress. So, we are applying a stress here must get deformed now when that is the case it would mean that in some particular one one type one slip system will get activated in another one another slip system will get activated but that is not all the complication here for example let's say we are talking about two different grains and when they deform one of them let us say becomes along so the stress direction is like this and let us say the other one gets deformed like this. So, what do we see here? It seems that there will be a gap will be created. and this is when when we have only one type of slip system. So, let us say there is only one type of slip system which was leading to this in both of them let us say there was So, in both of them let us say there was only one type of slip system and when it if it if only one type of slip system gets activated in both of these they will govern and whichever way they are it is possible they will let the deformation go and in many a cases in fact, in most of the cases what will happen is that at the interface a gap or a crack will get created, but we know that does not happen. So, it means what is what does that mean is that there must be minimum number of planes must get activated in each grain. What it will do? What will this do? What it will do is that it will ensure contiguity of deformation. In this two dimensional space, it is very easy to realize that what you would need is a two in set of independent slip system. So, if we are talking about one grain over here, one grain over here, both of them are getting deformed. So, both of them should be compatible at the interface with each other and therefore, at least two independent slip systems must get activated and this is when we are looking at in a two dimensional model. When you are talking about a three dimensional model similar contiguity principle must be held. So, that deformation homogeneous deformation does not lead to crack initiation at the interfaces and for three dimensional system this implies 
five independent. We are not in a position to derive this, but there are several uh, classic uh, journal articles which show that in three dimension five independent slip systems are required. So, in three uh, in three dimensional system this is what you will read at most of the places that five independent slip systems ok. In one particular plane uh, you will get three or four slip system, but that does not mean all of them are independent. In fact, in a plane you can get only two independent slip system. In 3 D similarly you will need five independent slip systems. So, five independent slip systems are needed to ensure contiguity of deformation and to ensure that all the grains get homogeneously deformed. So, this is uh, the, this is how we are not in a we are not uh, quantitatively deriving anything, but this is the basic information that you must have regarding deformation in polycrystalline material. In the second half of the course we will when we touch upon plasticity we will probably also describe this part in more detail. But for now it is time that we start or uh, move on to another aspect of glide in this uh, glide of the dislocation. So, we have been discussing about dislocation glide where we encountered Pearl Navarro stress and now we want to pictureize how this glide takes place when there are edge dislocations, when there are screw dislocations when they are positive or negative edge dislocation, when they are positive or negative screw dislocation. So, this is what we will pictureize in this particular slide. So, let us say that you have a bar like this, it can be inside a bulk material or somewhere and let us say you are applying a shear stress. So, let me show the shear stress with a different color. So, this is the shear stress and let us say the Berger vector is in this particular direction. So, this is the shear stress on the two sides uh, being applied like this and simultaneously for balance you will have to have the shear stress on these two planes, but which we are not uh, right now describing. Now, when this deforms the final shape you can imagine would be So, let us say that one dislocation has moved. So, this will if one dislocation had moved this would cause one B step in this bar. So, this is initial condition this is final condition. Now, what we will look at is what will happen if uh, it were there was a edge dislocation here positive edge negative edge positive screw dislocation and a negative screw dislocation. So, let us look at it. So, let us say when you applied the stress one edge dislocation got introduced which is now moving. So, this is a positive edge dislocation somewhere over here because it has already created a ledge here and it will keep moving in on this particular plane and this is the shear stress being applied and as you can as you remember from the Pearl Navarro valley it will move in steps like this. Why? Because there are particular positions at which the there is lowest stress required. So, it will kind of hop. So, this there is a dislocation here. I will now have to show it with a different color because it has got mixed up. So, in this particular case the dislocation is moving in which direction? In this direction. So, this stress and this Berger vector if you have a positive edge dislocation the 
dislocation is moving to this direction. Now, let us look at a negative edge dislocation. So, a negative edge dislocation has been introduced which is over here and which direction would it move? You can imagine it will move in this direction and again it will hop like this because these are the regions where it will have minimum stress or minimum energy configuration. So, the same stress is acting differently on the two positive and edge negative edge dislocations that is one thing. Now, let us look at how it will behave when we have a positive and negative screw dislocation. So, this is the slip plane. and there will also be a step like this and this is where we have the screw dislocation line which I will show which I, I keep showing by blue color. So, this is our screw dislocation and when you are applying a stress like this which we had shown earlier. Okay, here I have made a mistake it should have been like this. This is how our stress is always. So, here which direction would do you think the screw dislocation would move? You can imagine it will move in this particular direction. So, this particular type of screw dislocation is moving like this. Now, we will have still another kind of screw dislocation as we know we can have two different right handed and left handed. So, we we'll can have still another screw dislocation this is the slip plane and this is the screw dislocation. it has not come out very well, but you can imagine this is a screw dislocation just like this one, but here which direction this screw dislocation would move? This screw dislocation would move in this direction. So, the summary here is that in the glide even though the uh, even though we will have different types of dislocations they and they will move in different directions, but the final outcome would be the same and it that depends on what is the Berger vector and what is the direction of the shear stress applied. So, whichever kind of dislocation you have depending on what is the shear dislocation uh, shear stress and what is the Berger vector the final outcome will be same and you will get different types of motions for the uh, for the edge dislocation and for the screw dislocation. Another important aspect is the direction of motion for the edge dislocation and the screw dislocation edge dislocation you would see moves in the direction of slip. So, it moves along the shear stress direction on the other hand the screw dislocation moves perpendicular to the B Berger vector and the edge dislocation moves parallel to the Berger vector. So, again the motion of direction of the slip uh, sorry motion of direction of the dislocation is also different from different kinds of dislocation and for different signs of dislocation. So, these are some two important uh, take home messages. So, let me write it over here. Dislocations of opposite sign glide in opposite 
direction. For a dislocation glide, a shear stress must act for the dislocation to move when we are saying glide it, uh, what we are trying to say is that for a dislocation to move a shear stress must act in the slip plane. So, the if you have looked at the diagram you would see that there is shear stress on the surface, but that shear stress would also act on the slip plane in the direction of Berger vector. or at least a component of it must lie along the Berger vector. If it is completely 90 degrees to it, then there will be no effect of the shear stress on the dislocation. So, these are two important uh, take home messages for this. Now, let us uh, move on to uh, another important aspect of glide. So, we have said we have always been saying that glide means the dislocation will move along a certain plane or something like this. Even in this diagram that we have shown, let us look at this. So, this is uh, let us first look at the edge dislocation, this is the edge dislocation and it is moving in this. So, we said that this dislocation line is moving from here to here to here to here. Now, the question is will the dislocation line jump all at once from one particular minima to another particular minima all of the line which will which can be very very huge lengths can all of it move at a time. In fact, it never happens what happens is that what that glide takes place with the help of what is called as kinks. So, the question is can whole dislocations jump or move simultaneously. So, if we have one dislocation ok let me we draw it more clear cleanly. So, let us say if we have like this So, this is one dislocation line will it move all from this position to this position simultaneously. Remember we started with the question that can all of the plane of a material shear simultaneously and we said no that it will happen by steps and what were those steps dislocation. Now, even we are breaking it down and we are asking can whole of dislocation line move simultaneously and the answer is no. So, how does it happen? if it has to move from here to here small step inside the dislocation line gets formed. So, this is what is called as kink and if you look at it if this was the line vector originally and this was the Berger vector. So, what are the characters of these? So, let me ask you for L 1, L 2, L 3. For L 1 what is the line vector like this? and what is the Berger vector like this. So, they are parallel. So, L 1 is screw dislocation L 2 L 2 is same as what would have been here earlier. So, L 2 is edge dislocation what about L 3 L 3 is parallel to L 1. So, it is similar in characteristic. So, it is also screw dislocation. So, kink is formed in a edge dislocation which has now partly different character. So, it was an earlier only a edge dislocation, but now what we have is a combination of edge then screw then edge then screw and then back to edge and during the movement over the movement it is not that its final its primary purpose is to take all the dislocation simultaneously 
Now, different positions may experience different amount of forces and because of that the motion may be slightly different for the whole section and what you will get. So, you started with a dislocation probably like this and different regions experience different amount of forces. This one, this particular region got moved furthest, this is still a little uh, kind of you can say pin and it is still over here, but overall there is there will be net displacement and this net displacement for several several dislocation would, would what, what is known as lead to the strain in the material. So, this is how the kinks lead to glide which lead to deformation. Meaning we started with the whole 3D material and we said no only one plane would move at a time. Then we said no one whole plane would also not move at a time, only a small section of it will move at a time. And therefore, those small sections when they move they lead to this uh, displacement of the whole dislocation which in turn leads to the strain in the material. So, let me jot down some of the important parameters for some of the important things that we observed or we understood King's movement leads to movement of dislocation lines. Another thing that we will come to or we will explain in more detail is that so far what we have seen that kinks had sharp edges. If you look over here the way we have drawn it is edge purely shear purely screw then pure edge then pure screw that need not again be the case. We said earlier dislocations can be can have mixed character even these kinks can have mixed character. So, the kinks need not have sharp corners. And what has been also analyzed is that energy of the system can be reduced by rounded mixed dislocation characters. Another thing that people have who have done who have uh, studied dislocation in greater detail have found that this roundedness how sharp or how roundedness rounded these uh, dislocations are it depends on Pearl Navarro valley. So, roundedness also depends on P n valley and this will become clear when we look at so let us say this is a pearl navarro value which is shallow and we have another one which is more deeper deep valleys so let me just draw just the lines to the minima over here and over here the dislocation may be something like this. On the other hand when you have very deep valleys the dislocations would have sharp sharp corners like this. So, we have uh, what is the difference in these two conditions that this one is shallow valley and this one is deep valley. So, this is another effect of pearl navarro energy on to the dislocations. So, their roundedness character will also change whether you have a shallow valley or a deep valley. Now, 
next what we will look at is the glide of a dislocation how does the glide or the real glide of the dislocation take place so for that first try to understand what is the how will it be different for a screw versus an edge what will it be different for edge what we have said is that for edge dislocation the slip or the glide must take place on the plane which contains both the verger vector as well as the line vector and for that that means for edge this is a unique plane which contains both b and u which means that the edge dislocation can only glide on same plane what does this mean for dislo for screw dislocation for screw dislocation berger vector and the line vector they are parallel so what it would mean is that they can glide on more than one plane which is also known as cross glide so let's understand this with the help of a diagram we drew this earlier in the day so let's say this is again three different planes okay and now what we'll take is a screw dislocation which is like this and we say that the berger vector here is bar 1 Zero one. Let's say this plane is one one one. This plane is one bar one one, and this plane is one one one. So these two have to be same. That is what we saw in uh, in a one two lectures back. This is what we have observed that these two planes have to be same if we are talking about a dislocation moving from here to here to here. And if this is the Berger vector, the line vector will have to be either bar one zero one or one zero bar one. so let's say this is bar 101 then we'll come back to this in the next lecture